Um, oh, excellent. Um, all right, so I'll keep this slide up as well so you know um, when each of these programs are happening. And this will also be the order that we are going to talk about our programs in. Um, so it looks like Elise is here. So Elise, if you want to go ahead and kick us off, that would be great. All right, thanks Katie for the introduction and uh, welcome to all admitted students. We're really excited to have you with us. Uh, my name is Elise Grenison and I am in charge of coordinating our summer experience uh, career exploration week trips. Um, this year we're really excited to offer an astounding 13 different programs for you to choose from. That's way more than in past years, but we're really excited about the variety that we have this year um, to help you really sort of delve into uh, different areas. Uh, they'll all run the week of Labor Day so that if they all kick off on September 6th, um, all of them except one will run through September 9th. The other one caps off a day early on September 8th. Um, I encourage you to visit our website, which I will drop the link to that page in uh, the chat at the end of my little, my little spiel. Um, but that way you can review all the different topics available to you and access the application page. Um, which is a WUFU form, so you don't need to worry about having created a handshake already. Um, but these are a really great way to not only explore different areas that you might be interested in um, for pursuing career paths or different research opportunities over the course of your career um, and your time at UChicago, but more importantly, these are a really great way to meet a lot of incoming students who have similar interests as you. Um, you'll be led by some of you know, the best of the best in our career advancement team um, who will make sure that there's lots of fun cultural activities. It's not all work. Um, there's lots of playtime included as well. Um, and whatever city your program will be in, um, it'll be a great way to explore that city and explore the field you might be interested in. Um, students are allowed to apply to multiple programs, but you'll only be selected for one. Um, and then you'll be prompted in your application if you're applying for multiple to um, rank in order of preference which one you'd like to include or which ones you are most interested in. Um, applications close June 12th and uh, I encourage you all to um, submit your application by then so that we can you know, have you in the fullest consideration. But um, the program cost is $1,000 and need-based financial aid may be available depending on your circumstances. Uh, and you'll also be prompted to uh, share whether or not you'd like to be included for that as well. Uh, so with that, I will leave the link to our website here in the chat. I think I might've seen a question pop up. Oh, I'll create, okay, there we go. I'll drop our specific one in there anyway and um, hand it off to the next person. Yeah, go ahead, Janelle, all you. All right, hi everyone, I'm Janelle White, she, her pronouns. I'm the director for the Office of Multicultural Student Affairs and I have the opportunity to run our centers or our larger centers pre-orientation program, uh, which is held by the Center for Identity and Inclusion, also known as CINI. Um, what's really unique about our pre-orientation program is that we have two different offices that are collectively hosting experiences. The Office of Multicultural Student Affairs, which supports students of color on campus, both international and domestic um, at the undergraduate and graduate levels, as well as our LGBTQ Student Life Center uh, that supports LGBTQIA community members as well um, at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. So when we are building our pre-orientation program to help you all identify your own network and build community within the uh, cultural communities that you identify as. Uh, if you are interested in participating in our pre-orientation programs, you can participate in one or both, depending on how you identify. We'll make sure that there are opportunities for those of you who have intersecting identities between being students of color and LGBTQA identified community members to participate in both of those uh, community programs because we have things that are separate and, and together um, we'll have a, a whole opportunity for you to connect in and really build that social network. We're also getting you connected in with different campus and, and city resources as well during your time. 
Uh, the biggest piece that I'll point out is that our pre-orientation is free. So if you um, are concerned about the cost of the orientation, um, this one is at no cost to you. Uh, we're paying for uh, your registration as well as your living expenses while you're here on campus. And then we'll also have some free goodies for you to take away uh, at the end of our time together. So happy to answer any more specific questions at the end, but hope to see you all there um, for the Center and Identity, Center of Identity and Inclusion Pre-Orientation Program. Yes, Janelle, you better work. Um, we love that. Hi, I'm Saida Cabell. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm the Assistant Director for student programming at the University Community Service Center. We love it here. Um, so quick question, get your reactions ready because you're gonna need to use them because I feed off energy. Um, how many of you are excited to come to the University of Chicago specifically because it's in Chicago? Like you're excited to explore the city. Yes, Josie, let's go. Oh, yes, hands. We love this. We love this. Okay, great. There's great news for all of you. And hopefully, you know, I'll get more reactions as I talk about how great this city is because it's my first love, um, my hometown. But yes, thank you for putting those hands up. We love to see the enthusiasm. And the great news is that there are two programs specifically for learning about the city. We've got Chicago bound and we've got Chicago urban explorers. So the difference is kind of the lens through which you want to explore the city. And for Chicago bound, we're using a topical lens. So if you're interested in learning about how the city deals with certain challenges like food insecurity or, you know, um, different rights for different groups or organizing, stuff like that. Um, Chicago Bound is the pre-O that explores the city through that sort of lens. Whoa, excuse me, that sort of lens. Um, and so, yeah, we definitely take a topical approach and sort of a neighborhood approach as well. Um, definitely trying to highlight some of the communities and the neighborhoods that surround the University of Chicago. One thing that we noticed at the University Community Service Center is that students are often really excited to get involved, but never really leave the university bubble of Hyde Park in their free time. So it can be a little bit intimidating to just kind of go into a community or a neighborhood where you're not like familiar with it or you don't spend a lot of time there. So Chicago Bound aims to give you an introduction so that you feel like um, you really are a part of the larger community, not just the, the university community, but the High Park community, the other surrounding, surrounding Southside communities and the larger city. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to do a lot of exploration of very cool topics and learn what different community organizations are doing to work on, you know, housing inequality and uh, other cool things. Um, we have some interesting discussions. Sometimes the topics are a little bit heavy, um, but if you are really about that life, um, really looking to examine the city through um, a, a critical lens of what's going on, what root causes are, what really amazing people are doing to combat some of the challenges that large cities inevitably face, then you're gonna have a lot of fun at Chicago Bound. And if you are like, this sounds like a lot, but I really wanna learn about Chicago, there's another option. It's not the one next, but it's the one after. Ask me questions. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Saida. Um, yeah, so uh, I probably should have introduced myself at the very beginning, but now I'm going to introduce myself um, to talk about Campus Crew and Q. Um, so I'm Katie Igelski Walt, I use she, her pronouns, and I work in college programming and orientation. Um, so first, Campus Crew, which will run September 13 to 19, is our one and only PRIO that will pay you to be a part of it. So there's a $300 stipend for folks who are accepted into this program. Um, during the day, you'll be helping our office to prepare the campus for orientation. Um, so whether that's helping us um, help students move in, 
um, during pre-orientation or helping us set up tents around campus or getting giveaways ready, things like that. Um, you'll just be given some different tasks every morning. And then in the afternoon and evening, you'll have a chance to explore different resources on campus, as well as in the larger city. Um, we do already have some Cubs tickets booked. So if you're interested in the Chicago Cubs, that's a great one for you too. Um, so that's Campus Crew. Um, the one thing is that anyone who signs up for Campus Crew, um, it is a smaller program. It, we're accepting uh, 16 folks into that program um, and everyone who is a part of that program needs to be eligible to work in, in the United States. So just make sure that's you before applying. Um, for Chicago Urban Explorers, as Saida was alluding to, um, this also has a great focus on the city of Chicago. Um, our model this year is to have the morning take place on campus to explore different resources available to you at UChicago. Um, so that may include a visit to the Institute of Politics, um, exploring the Logan's, Logan Arts Center, um, visiting the library, just getting used to some of the resources that are available on campus. And then in the afternoon, going to neighborhoods that are near campus, whether Hyde Park, Pilsen, um, just various areas close to campus that are probably the neighborhoods you'll visit most often um, or mo most easily during your time here at UChicago. And then in the evening, going further off campus to explore some of our uh, cultural touch points in Chicago. Um, so getting downtown, um, potentially up to Second City, things like that. So going further afield from the university at night. Um, so that's Q in a very small nutshell. Um, again, please feel free to put any questions in the chat. Um, I'll be leading the Q&A, so if you want to direct message me, that's fine, or you can just put them in the general chat. Um, but I will pass it over to Karina. Hi, everyone. My name is Karina. I work in the Center for Leadership and Involvement, um, and I am the person working with Discover Leadership this year. So um, Discover Leadership is formally known as UChicago Leads Prio. So um, if you see, hear me use those interchangeably or like hear alumni um, refer it as you Chicago leads, it is still the same program. Um, we have a pretty like small cohort. We take about 30 students that we then divide into small groups um, just because we want to make sure that groups are able to um, like have those like small group connections within the cohort, the larger cohort um, and the participants that um, the peer leaders, I apologize, are previous participants. So they'll get a chance to connect with other student leaders on campus as well. Um, we try to focus on um, introducing participants to the concept of personal leadership and provide the opportunity for students to explore their own leadership style. So we focus on individual leadership development. So we'll talk about our Strengths Quest, which is one of our um, programs that we also host throughout the year. It's an assessment that you take that gives you your top five strengths and how um, those can manifest in your own leadership style, working in groups and things like that. Um, and we also focus on leadership stories, which is kind of the leadership, um, a leadership practice based on storytelling. So we ask students to reflect on any experiences that they've had, any identities that they hold, um, and write their own leadership story. And at the end of the week, um, groups, they'll share it within their small group. And it's something that um, students very much enjoyed kind of getting to know each other on a more deeper level by the end of the week. Um, and then addition to the individual leadership um, development, we also do leadership in the context of a community. So we focus each day on a different um, topic per se. So we have done arts in the past where we toured the Logan, Logan Center and talked to staff over there. Um, we um, have other days that are like athletics and we talk to U Chicago coaches. We also go um, talk to a U Chicago alumni that works with the Cubs and we then go to a game um, businesses as well. We have gone to Dark Matter Coffee. We visited the Polsky Center. Um, we go to the Second City Show kind of for fun, but then also um, with the Revival Theater, we do an improv workshop. Um, and we uh, have also had the, I'm trying to think, there's a lot of days. We have a day focused on like nonprofit, which we 
um, collaborate also with um, Saida over in the Community Service Center. Um, we've had a panel of like community leaders and nonprofits. Um, you get to connect with university admins as well. Um, so it's a lot, it's a lot of like networking in different sessions each day is very different. Um, I'm trying to think, what am I missing? I think that that's it. There is a cost of um, $100 to participate um, in the program. However, if you are in need of financial assistance, you can just assistance. You can just let us know in the application. There is a question that says um, to check the box if you need that, and then we can work that out. Um, so I think that that is all that I should cover, but. Let me know any questions. I, I'm happy to answer them at the end. Awesome, thanks, Karina. And then my name is Samuel Schallenberger, he, him, his pronouns, and I am in our college programming and orientation office. I have the opportunity to work with International Pre-Orientation or IPO, which very similarly to, um, you know, Katie talked about Q, kind of getting to see not only the campus that you're going to be on and getting acclimated, but also the surrounding area and then getting a little bit further out towards the evening time for a lot of great food from a lot of different cultures, seeing a lot of different parts of the city. But this is specifically for students who are coming from all around the world internationally to kind of have some community together. So you're going to get to meet with upperclassmen, you're going to get to meet with faculty members and staff and students whose whole goal is to make sure that you feel welcomed on campus and aware of all of the different resources that you have available, not only as a student of the college at UChicago, but specifically as an international student. So that's going to include some essentials such as setting up bank accounts and getting phones all ready so that you can communicate with folks at home um, as well as here locally. So we're gonna make sure that we get those checked off, but also take some time to get to know one another. You'll know other international students on campus by the time that a week actually starts because you'll be familiarized with all their faces um, and then you are also going to get to have some time to just take a little bit of unstructured relaxation because some of you are traveling from far and wide. So um, we're gonna make sure that you get to spend a lot of time on campus as well, just in community with each other. Similarly to some of our other PRIO programs, um, there is a program fee, but IPO is need blind. So as with the others, you can just indicate that on your application. Um, and please let me know in the chat if you have any specific questions about international pre-orientation. Hey, Samuel. Um, I forgot to mention, so Chicago Bound is capped at 16 folks, or sorry, um, Campus Crew is capped at 16 folks, and Q is capped at around 100. Um, so just to give you a sense of numbers for that. Um, the last program is the Phoenix Outdoor Program, or POP. Um, this one is capped at around 110-ish. Um, we do have three trips going this year. Two will be backpacking, one will be at a campground. Um, there's one backpacking trip that will be between about nine and 12 miles each day over five days. And then one that is about five to eight miles per day for four days. Um, and then the campground, there will be day hikes, but it won't be backpacking. So if you're interested in the outdoors and like camping, um, but don't want to backpack, which is completely fine, um, then we do have an option for you as well. Um, and each of those trips will have between uh, 32 and 40 students on them. Um, that one, of course, will cover a lot of outdoor skills, regardless of which trip you're on. Um, you'll also get a chance to talk with our student leaders about um, ways to get outside in Chicago if you're coming from a very outdoorsy place and are not sure what that's going to be like in the city of Chicago. There are outdoor spaces here, um, so it's a great way to learn from students who have navigated that um, because a lot of our students are very outdoorsy, um, as you can imagine. Um, and then you'll also get a chance to do some um, small group specific conversations kind of preparing you for your first year at U Chicago, which I think is a common thread through all of these pre orientation programs. Um, and again, Campus Crew, Q, IPO, and POP are all need blind. Um, so they do have fees, but if you request aid, um, we'll definitely work with you on that, and that's no problem at all. Um, so before we get into some of the questions that have been coming in, which are great, I just want to quickly go over 
housing because um, we got a lot of housing questions not only in this chat but also ahead of time um, so what that looks like for our pre-orientation programs and this does not include career exploration week because that takes place off campus um, so just for the ones that are taking place on campus um, students will arrive on the first day of their program we'll be sending a specific window of time that you can arrive for move-in um, it would likely be between 10 a.m and 3 p.m um, so there will be a large uh, amount of time that you can come um, so don't worry too much about flights but it'll be in the morning and early afternoon um, you will go to your term time permanent fall room, you'll be able to drop off any items that you are bringing with you for the school year in your room, and then we will close the door and lock it behind you. You won't have time to actually like move in. Um, you'll just be able to put your stuff inside so you don't have to cart it around with you during the week of Prio. Um, and then from there, you will go to check in at the pre-orientation residence hall. Um, we'll be letting you know which one that is once we have it confirmed, but there will be one residence hall set aside for pre-orientation. Um, all groups will be put in areas together. So um, like everyone from Chicago Bound will be in one area and everyone from Q will be in one area and so on and so forth. Um, the only exception to that is if your permanent term time room is in the pre-orientation residence hall, you will get to just move straight into your term time room. Um, so that may or may not be with your group. Um, but again, most of these, you won't be in your room or the residence hall, except for when you're sleeping. So um, just think of it in, in those terms. Um, so again, um, each of you will come on the first day of your program, um, and then everyone will move from their term, from their PREO room to their term time room on the 19th. Um, so one of the major perks of being a part of a pre-orientation program is you are moving in a day early, so you won't have to deal with the madness that is move-in day on the 20th and 21st. Um, you'll already be moved in on the 19th. Um, you'll basically check out of the PREO residence hall the morning of the 19th. We'll have a place you can store um, whatever bag you brought for the week of PREO um, while you do things on your last day. And then you'll come and pick anything up at 3 p.m. That's when we get the go ahead to move everyone in. So if you do have family members who are looking to come and help you move in on the 19th, um, just let them know that you'll have programming up until 3 p.m. Um, and that may vary by program, but you won't be able to actually move into your term time room until 3 p.m. on the 19th. I hope that answers a lot of these moving questions, um, but I'll start going down the line and I'll plan to pass it off to other folks um, if it's program specific, but I did see one asking about applying to multiple programs. Yes, you're absolutely welcome to apply to multiple programs. Um, we coordinate with one another, so we're gonna do our best to make sure everyone gets into one of the programs that they've applied to. Um, but you may get multiple offers from programs and then you can just decide which one you want to participate in. Um, what else? Is Canada considered international or domestic? Um, really, this is kind of up to you. Um, if you're an international student, you don't have to do IPO. You could do any of these. It's really just if you want to kind of focus on what that experience is going to be like, um, then IPO is a great option. Um, so from Canada, yeah, technically you're international. If you wanna to come to IPO, you're absolutely welcome. Um, but if you wanna do a different program, that's all right too. Um, someone is asking about how many first years participate in pre-orientation programs. Um, maybe we can go down the line and say how many you're accepting into your program. Um, so for crew, it's 16, for Q, it's capped at around 100, and for pop, it's capped at just over 100. And then maybe Samuel's next in my line. Yeah, IPO is capped at 150. Chicago bound is capped at 25. 
Discovery or leadership is capped at 30. CINI is capped at 150. CEWs are capped at around 20 per program. So we'll be accepting about 160 students total. Yeah, so it looks like Whitney did answer this in the chat, but it's about a quarter of incoming first years participate in some sort of summer experience or pre-orientation program. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a high number, which is great. Um, there is some wiggle room in some of our programs. So again, we will try and get everyone into a PREO that's interested in doing a pre-orientation program, um, but just based around space availability and um, budgeting and all that good stuff, there is a, a point at which we do need to cap our programs. Um, okay. Yeah, another question is approximately what percentage of those who apply for a PREO program are accepted? Again, it kind of depends on how many people apply. Um, so just how far over each of our caps we are is um, what kind of determines what percentage we accept. But again, we do try and get everyone who's interested in PREO in general a spot. Um, so there is the potential if you apply to maybe a program, only a program that has a more limited number of spots. Um, we'll plan to reach out to folks if there are spots open on other PREO programs to say like, hey, I know you were interested in, um, in Chicago bound, but we have a spot open if you don't get in over in queue or whatever it may be. Um, so we will do our best to make sure that we get as close to 100% as possible. Um, Okay, when you mention free, what is the thousand cost mentioned? Um, the thousand dollar cost, I believe, is for the CEWs. Um, Elise, do you want to talk a little bit about what that includes? Yeah, so CEWs, your program cost in general will be a thousand dollars. If you think that you will need need based financial aid uh, in order to accommodate that cost, uh, we're happy to take that into consideration. Um, that cost is just to cover um, basic budget expenses like meals, accommodation, things like that. Awesome, yeah, thanks Elise. Um, for the other programs, um, like the other folks have said, the Center for Identity and Inclusion is a free program as is Chicago Bound. Um, campus crew, you are paid $300. The only thing you need to pay for is just to get here. Um, so we don't provide like a shuttle from the airport, um, don't cover flight costs. Um, so yeah, once you're on campus, everything else is covered, your meals, your housing, all that good stuff. And then you also get a $300 stipend after orientation in early October. Uh, for Chicago Urban Explorers, there is a $500 cost and that's the same for the Phoenix Outdoor Program. Um, that's really covering your transportation. Uh, I mean, I'm saying it contributes to helping cover your transportation, um, your meals, your housing, all of that. Um, so you won't have to pay anything extra outside of that $500 for either of those, those programs. Um, Karina mentioned Discover Leadership is a $100 fee. And then I believe IPO is a $400 fee. Is that right, Sammy? Thanks, awesome. Um, and again, those are all just covering some of, of the costs for the PREO programs. Um, I'm seeing one about bringing bedding. Wow, Claire, really good question. Um, no, for the actual PREO program in the PREO residence hall, we will provide bedding for you. Um, if you know you're a very like cold sleeper and want to bring an extra blanket, go for it. But the basics of bedding will be provided in the PREO residence hall. The one thing you'll need to keep in mind is that when you move from the PREO residence hall to your term time room on the 19th, there won't be any bedding um, in your term time room. So just make sure you pack it in the stuff that you leave um, in your permanent residence hall room. Um, if your parents are coming to help and yeah, just make sure you have bedding for the night of the 19th. Um, instead of having it be something your folks bring if they're coming on the 20th, because then you won't have anything to sleep on on the 19th. Um, okay. So student, yeah, so there was a uh, question about students coming internationally, but being a US citizen, 
Um, can they be a part of IPO? Yes, absolutely. We're not checking anything for IPO. So if there's any part of IPO that appeals to you, um, go for it, like apply. We're not going to check anything on that to make sure that you're an international student in any way. Um, it's really just that what's being covered will apply specifically to international students. So if there are aspects of that that apply to you, then yeah, you're more than welcome to be a part of IPO. Um, if, if we have to take a flight to get to Chicago, should we book it for the day prior to the start of the program or the same day it starts? Um, for the most part, we ask that you arrive the day of your program. If you have concerns around getting in um, before, let's say like 5 p.m. on the first day of the program, um, most first days are just kind of move in meeting your small groups, hanging out, and then a welcome dinner. Um, so you won't be missing anything if you're kind of at the later portion of our arrival and check-in window. Um, if you have concerns about being able to get in before 5 p.m., like I said, and want to try and fly in the night before, we like highly discourage it, but we can work with you. Um, we just need to know as soon as possible so we know how many numbers we need to send to housing um, to set aside rooms for each day. So if that applies to you, I would reach out to your program coordinator specifically so that they can work on that with you. Um, but for the most part, we ask that you arrive on the first day of your program. Um, okay. Oh, we have had a couple of questions about our applications for PREA programs on like, do we look at them or accept people on a first come first serve basis? Is there any benefit to applying earlier rather than later? Um, the answer is no. We kind of look at all applications at once and um, we all talk with one another before we send out acceptances to make sure that hopefully everyone has a spot in one of the programs. Um, so really we, we don't really pay attention to when they're coming in. So don't worry about if you need to wait till the last day, it's okay. <laughs> um, maybe don't make more stress for yourself and get it in earlier, but we'll look at them um, kind of holistically rather than on a first come first serve basis. Um, Oh, again, another thing about coming early, if you're coming with your family and you want to stay off campus before, like come early, stay off campus in a hotel or an Airbnb or whatever it may be, and then come to campus on the first day of your program, that's completely fine. Um, it's really just let us know if you would need to stay in on-campus housing early. Um, so yeah, you're more than welcome to come to Chicago early and stay off campus. Um, yeah, that's completely fine. Um, someone was asking about the arrival dates for Prios. I think you can all still see the PowerPoint slideshow, but the, the first date on each of these is the first date of the program. So that's the arrival date. So um, yeah, September, it's either gonna be September 13th, 14th or 15th, depending on your program. Um, yeah, there's a question. If someone comes the night before, they'll need to stay in a hotel. Yes, that's the ideal. If um, you're concerned about cost and would rather stay on campus, um, we can't get in before the 13th. So anything before that, we can't really accommodate. Um, but if you're in IPO, um, which starts on September 15th, we can potentially work with you um, to get in a little early on the 14th. Again highly discouraged, but um, we don't want that to be a barrier to people coming and doing these programs. So we can work with you, just reach out to, um, if it's IPO Samuel, and then um, the other ones, I'll put up on the screen our contact information. Um, other PREO folks, is there anything that's come up that you now want to comment on about your programs through these questions um, or any advice or things you would want students to consider as they apply? Um, I'm just going to fairly quickly, I want to clarify the fees component with the Center for Identity and Inclusion. So our, um, very similar to what Katie mentioned, our fees are, are 
it is free to you once you are on campus and checking in. So your arrival to campus, tra transportation to campus will be on you, but the actual registration and participation in the program is free. Okay, a Meals for Pop, is it packed meals? Um, and for other programs on campus, will diet restrictions be accommodated? I'll at least answer the first one and maybe someone else can take the other part. Um, the Meals for Pop will all be, we will pack all of the elements to cook on the backpacking trail. Um, so yes, we will definitely accommodate any dietary restrictions. We've done everything from kosher to gluten-free to dairy-free. Um, we've really seen it all. It's not a problem to accommodate uh, any dietary restrictions. Almost all the meals that we do on the trail are vegetarian with optional meat add add-ins. Um, so yeah, again, it's pretty easy to accommodate any dietary restrictions. And at the campground, it's very similar. The meals are a little more <laughs> extravagant because you don't have to worry about carrying it all week. Um, so again, it's all stuff that we put together that the student leaders help prepare. Um, but yeah, we can definitely accommodate any dietary restrictions. And then I don't know if other, other programs wanna talk a bit about that. Um, in the Discover leadership application, I um, posted a question asking for any sort of like dietary restrictions, accommodations or anything like that. So we can take that into consideration. Obviously, if anything changes also before like program starts, then you can always uh, reach out to me um, to let me know. But yes, we usually our meals are either on campus dining halls or um, catered meals. So it is pretty easy to accommodate any sort of um, situation. Um, I was just going to say the same. Um, the majority of meals for Chicago Bound are going to be not on campus, but there will be some on campus meals. Um, the dining halls do accommodate dietary restrictions. And as Karina mentioned in our application, we ask for dietary restrictions so we can be mindful of the food that we are uh, enjoying together um, before we order it in, in the planning. Elise, could you talk a little bit, what, what do meals look like for the um, CEWs? So for CEWs, uh, the leaders of the treks will typically plan most of them since those are more like communal aspects. In some of our other career treks, it's been a little bit more on your own, but for these specifically, all of your lunches and dinners will be reservations at restaurants or, you know, like, you know, grab and go stuff. But um, they, we do take into account, you know, dietary restrictions. That's part of our application questions as well. Um, and we're, we're happy to, you know, work around and accommodate anything that a student may need in terms of, you know, specific meal accommodations. Awesome, thanks. Um, another question I saw in uh, the registration form was when do we let you all know um, what program you've been accepted into? Um, so just so everyone knows, um, applications close on June 10th. So make sure that you get your application in before then. Um, and then decision emails will be sent on or around, give us a little leeway, uh, June 24th. Um, so two weeks after applications close, um, from there, you'll get all the information from each of the programs or the program you've been accepted into, and you'll have until July 8th to confirm your spot. Um, because some people may be accepted into multiple programs, um, we do ask that everyone just confirms their spot so we know who's going to be where. Um, and from there, you'll just mainly be communicating with your different program coordinators um, with any forms that we ask you to fill out. Um, so yeah, all, all will be known hopefully around June 24th. Um, a question for you, Elise, for the CWs, if you're participating in a program located in your local area, can participation be day only, no overnight stay needed? 
My understanding is that students will need to stay at the hotel where the rest of the group is staying for purposes of like taking attendance every morning, keeping track of everyone, things like that. Um, I can certainly double check, but I believe that um, you'll be expected to stay in the hotel with um, other students that are in your group. Um, I did also see another question, um, CEW start on September 6th. Should students arrive at campus at least a day earlier? Thanks. Um, you should plan to fly into the city where your program is taking place. Um, it takes place in the week prior to the rest of the pre-orientation programs, and those are the ones that will take place on campus in Chicago. But all of these other programs will take place in cities throughout the United States. All right. Um, another question I saw on the the registration form was just asking about like, do you have to stay in the dorms for these creos and are all activities required? Um, I can speak at least for the programs that I oversee. Um, they're set up in such a way that a lot of the purpose of the program is that you're in your small group um, experiencing these different activities together, having small group conversations and reflection time. Um, and so from my point of view, attending all activities and all aspects of the pre-orientation is really essential to what the, the program is supposed to be and, and trying to do. Um, I don't know if any other PREO feels differently, um, but yes, if you are applying and committing to the program, we do ask that you're there for the full time um, participating in all the activities. Yeah, I can jump in on that one. Um, I agree with Katie for the most part. Yeah, if you're applying to the program, we expect that you're interested in the activities that are scheduled. Um, that said, if there is something that is like, you know, difficult or, you know, really challenging, we do ask that you be okay with discomfort during the program because out of our comfort zone is where we see the most growth, right? But, um, you know, there are circumstances where you really do need to, to take a moment to yourself or step out. And of course, that's perfectly fine. We want to make sure everyone feels safe at all times. And, um, you know, sometimes we have a moment, so that's fine. Um, but selecting in and out of activities for funsies is not really encouraged. I, I would echo um, those sentiments. This, this is a really great opportunity for you all to get connected in with a variety of different resources and offices um, in the city. And so we would hope that you're gonna take the uh, take it most advantage of this program that you're potentially applying and paying for, even if it is a free program. Um, and so it, it's not necessarily a thing where it's, it's like, hey, I get to move to campus early. Um, and then you're just in Chicago for a few days before the actual um, orientation starts. So we really want you all to be, um, and I'll echo what Samuel said in the chat, we want, we want you to be authentic and understanding of why do you want to participate in these programs, um, specifically with the CINI pre-orientation program. It's all about building your social network and community um, and connecting in with one another. So for your essays, if you're interested in that particular program, really tell us what is it that you're looking for when it comes to building a community, when it comes to um, existing on this campus and, and in Chicago with the identities that you hold and why it's important for you to be a part of this particular program. Yeah, thanks, Janelle. That's actually a really good lead into um, if anyone else wants to talk about kind of what they're looking for when they're reviewing applications. Is there anything specific students should keep in mind when they're writing essays? Um, Again, we have no access to your college application, so don't worry about that piece. Um, but I think for, I would echo Janelle in that, like, we're really looking for, like, what part of this specific PREO are you connecting to? And, like, how can it help kind of set you up for success in your first year? Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend copy and pasting the same essay for every single one of our programs. Um, as tempting as that may be, we're just looking for folks who will really get something out of our different prios. Um, but I don't know if anyone else wants to share kind of what they're looking for. Yeah, I'll echo that. Um, as I said, we are capped at 25 this year. And so that makes Chicago Bound pretty selective. And every year 
we get applications where I can tell that y'all copy and pasted another like short answer or parts of your personal statement that I did not read. So it's totally out of context for me. Um, don't do that. It's not going to get you in the program. You have to actually um, take your time and think about why you wanna be in each specific program. Um, we understand y'all are college essayed out, right? But um, we don't think our applications are super demanding. We just really want to have a decent understanding of who you are and why you should be in this program versus another student, especially when they have caps. So um, we're not asking you to like produce the work of your life, but um, take your time and really be thoughtful about your responses and you know what's appealing to you about the specific program you're choosing. So Janelle just gave specifics. I can give a couple, right? Like um, what kind of challenges or issues are you interested in learning about? What topics pique your interest in? Um, or what neighborhoods, what about Chicago piques your interest that you that makes you wanna do Chicago bound? What do you think you can contribute to a cohort and what do you hope to learn from the cohort, right? Like um, we really wanna know that you're gonna take advantage of being in the small community of, um, being in front of community partners and, and getting to know the work that they do and care about. Um, so yeah, definitely just gave you some freebies there, but take your time and be thoughtful. I would add um, kind of, I mean, I echo everything that everyone has said. And that also, I think that part of our application, we also just want to know who you are. It'll help us like place you in small groups. Um, when we get to that point in the summer where we're um, kind of divvying up the program and also it'll help us also know like what are the interests of the group. So if we think that, oh, the group it has in general would be interested in talking to these leaders on campus or this on, uh, are in the Chicago community, it'll definitely help us also build any other like smaller program, parts of our program. That is also true for Bound. The interest you all list on your applications help us to kind of build out the schedule for the week and determine what partners we're speaking to and what topics we're covering. So we do pay attention to what you write. Awesome, thanks y'all. Um, there was a specific question about Career Exploration Week. Um, Elise, it was just a question about, is there any specific benefit for pre-med students to apply to Career Exploration Week? Um, and I think just so everyone knows in, in the room, um, the Career Exploration Weeks, none of them take place on campus and you do not come to campus beforehand. So please do not show up on campus. Um, for Career Exploration Week, each of them is in a different city. Um, so you will just go directly to that city um, and that program. Um, so Elise, I guess maybe in a, a broader sense, like um, if you already know kind of what major you're interested in, is there any special sort of like benefit to doing these programs? Yeah, there absolutely is a benefit, even if you already know what specific major you're interested in, especially because with the wider variety of topics that we have this year, um, they have that much more specificity around the types of topics and career fields that you'll be exploring. And we do, we have actually just added a um, healthcare career exploration program that'll be taking place in Philadelphia, um, where you'll be visiting specific hospitals in the area. I mean, Philadelphia has a ton of different medical research facilities and hospitals there. Um, and we're really excited to be adding that one to the roster for this year. So definitely if you're considering pre-med, apply to that one. Um, there are other topics such as biological sciences, physical sciences, um, there's engineering, Green careers, uh, cinema arts and media really runs the full gamut of the different branches of um, academic majors that undergrads have access to. Um, so definitely would encourage you to at the very least review that list and um, apply to any of those specific topics that are of interest to you um, based on the majors that you're considering. We have time for a couple more questions if there are any others out there. <laughs> in the Zoom world. Um, while I wait to see if any others come in, I did just want to share that there are a couple um, other webinars coming up this month. Um, so if you are an international student who's coming in in the class of 2026, there'll be a webinar um, 
tomorrow, actually. Um, so that QR code will take you to the page where you can find that event. Um, and then we also have a UChicago Mentoring Program UCMP panel um, on the 26th at 6 p.m. Um, so yeah, feel free to check those out. Those should be really helpful. Um, and we'll be doing more of those throughout the whole summer. So definitely check those out. Doesn't look like any other questions came in. Uh, any last words from uh, the other PRIO coordinators that you wanna share? Um, I will also put up our emails. So if you won't have a program specific question, um, definitely feel free to reach out to us. But any other thoughts, questions, comments? We're excited to meet you. That's all I got. <laughs> True. I love it. I think that's all that needs to be said. Um, we appreciate you all taking the time to come and listen to us today. Hopefully we answered all your questions, but again, feel free to reach out to any of us if new ones come up and we will be posting a recording of this on the orientation communications page. So. Take care, everyone. We can't wait to see your applications. <laughs>